Welcome back. All right, so today we're going to talk about Thomas Vanek. Thomas Vanek, a player who played from 2005 until 2019 in the National Hockey League. He was a number five pick in 2003. And there are some noteworthy things about his relatively long career where he played for a number of teams. Uh, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight teams before his career is done. But a majority of his time spent playing in Buffalo and a lot of it wearing the Buffa Slug jersey, right? So 2005-2006, the year after the lockout wiped out season of 0405, 81 games played by Vanek, 25 goals, 23 assists, 48 points. In the playoffs, two goals are added in 10 playoff games. So for Vanek, good start, right? 25 goal season for a rookie is excellent. And he followed that up with one of his best career seasons, if not his best career season in 06, 07. In 82 games, 43 goals, which was fifth overall in the NHL, to go with 41 assists and 84 points. In the playoffs, he had six goals, four assists, 10 points in 16 games. The 06, 07 Sabres, pretty good team. And this was a pretty good team that lost a couple of really good players in Briere and Drury, who left in the offseason. So this is a Buffalo team that didn't want to lose more. Keep that in mind because uh, this second team all-star Thomas Vanek is signed to an offer sheet worth $50 million over seven years by the Edmonton Oilers. So the Oilers give him that offer sheet and Buffalo really kind of had to match it. As much as the compensation likely would have helped them for the future, they needed to have well, somebody out of that top six to stay with the team for the next season. And so they match Vanek's, sheet, Vanek's offer sheet, which leads to a lot of discussions of that contract for a long, long time. So the season after signing that offer sheet and Buffalo matching it, in 82 games, he, plays, he scores 36 goals, 28 assists for 64 points. Good season, yes. Great season, no. He's under more pressure because of the fact that he signed that offer sheet. 2008-2009, in 73 games, he scores 40 goals, which is fifth overall in the NHL to go with 24 assists and 64 points. He did play in the All-Star game that year. That is the only time he made an All-Star game appearance. 2009-2010, his totals fall back a bit in 71 games, 28 goals, 25 assists, 53 points. In three playoff games, as Buffalo gets back to the playoffs, two goals and assist for three points. 2010-2011, plays 80 games with Buffalo, 32 goals, 41 assists for 73 points. And he adds five goals in seven playoff games. So things are going okay for Buffalo, right? The bottom falls out in 2011-2012 for the team. In 78 games, Vanek's numbers take a bit of a hit as well. 26 goals, 35 assists, 61 points. 2012-2013, lockout shortened season. Vanek has a very good year. 38 games, 20 goals, 21 assists, 41 points. But again, the contract is, is still a topic of conversation. And so Buffalo would trade said contract during the 2013-14 season, in 13 games, Vanek scores 4 goals, 5 assists, 9 points. And then he's traded. October 27th, he was traded to the New York Islanders for a 2015 first, which was later traded for uh, to the Ottawa Senators, and that became Colin White. Uh, 2015 second, Matt Molson also involved in that trade. With the Islanders after the trade in 2013-14, he plays 47 games, 17 goals, 27 assists, 44 points. So near a point per game, things are going well. He gets traded again at the deadline. On March 5th, he's traded with a 2014 fifth round pick in exchange for a 2014 second and Sebastian Kohlberg. So it's a trade that, that really is about Montreal going towards the playoffs and the Islanders not. So after the trade to Montreal, he played pretty well there too. 18 games, 6 goals, 9 assists, 15 points. And in the playoffs, he scores 5 goals, 5 assists for 10 points in 17 games. So, all of these years have gone by now. Vanek's heading to market, rather than staying with the Montreal Canadiens, which I remember at the time, there was some healthy discussion about whether or not Vanek should stick around with Montreal and his goal scoring would help. But either way, on July 1st of 2014, he signs a three-year contract with the Minnesota Wild. I believe it was a $6.5 million cap hit. And in 80 games, with Minnesota that first year, he has 21 goals to go with 31 assists, 52 points. So that 21 goals is the lowest goal total he had had in a full season in his career. And I'm saying full season because he had 20 in 2012-2013, but he only played 38 games. So in the playoffs, he adds four assists in 10 games. 
Not the kind of season that Minnesota was hoping for. 2015-16 in 74 games. He has 18 goals, 23 assists, 41 points. And after that season is done, Minnesota does what they have to do, at least what they feel they have to do. They bought out the final year of that contract on June 24th. So now he's going back to the market. And he's not, he's not on the market for long. July 1st of 2016, he signs with the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, and the Red Wings, they use him. 48 games, 15 goals, 23 assists, 38 points. But he is traded at the deadline to a Florida Panthers team looking to make the playoffs. March 1st, he was traded for a 2017 third round pick and Dylan McElrath. So, after that trade, it does not work out well in Florida. In 20 games in Florida, just two goals to go with eight assists for 10 points. So he's going back to the market again. Uh, he signs as a free agent September 1st with the Vancouver Canucks in 2017. So Vancouver, a team going through, well, it's been lean days since 2015 anyways, outside of the little 2020 run they had there. It's kind of a forgotten blip at this point. But he signs as a free agent with Vancouver. Now it's pretty obvious pretty early the Canucks aren't going to be a playoff team. So he's traded. He's traded at the deadline February 26th in exchange for Ole Jokinen, or UC Jokinen, sorry, UC Jokinen, not Ole, UC Jokinen, who had cleared waivers earlier in the year. So I was baffled because I was like, well, if they wanted Jokinen, they could have picked him up on waivers, as well as Tyler Mott. Now, Tyler Mott, a player that just wasn't fitting into Columbus's plans, ended up fitting in just fine to Vancouver's, proved this guy wrong. It was a good trade for Vancouver. On the Columbus side of it, they can't be disappointed with the production they got out of Vanek after the trade. In 19 games, he has 7 goals, 8 assists, 15 points. My upset at the time was I thought Vanek was playing well, and I thought he should have got a return that was more than what it was. I guess the market was low. Uh, but in the playoffs for Columbus that year in 6 games, 1 goal, 1 assist for 2 points. So, July 1st of 2018, he signs a free agent, signs a free agent again with Detroit. Uh, 64 games played with the Wings, 16 goals, 20 assists, 36 points. And that season, he is not traded. So that's a, a, a win for him right there that he's not being traded again during the season. He was traded twice in 2013-14, once during 2016-17, and once during 2017-18. So finally, he's with one team for a full season. And... Uh, I mean, outside of the two years in Minnesota, which I guess we could see as being disappointments considering that contract. But he retires with 1,029 games played, uh, 373 goals, 416 assists, 789 points in the playoffs, 69 games played, 21 goals, 15 assists, 36 points. So he wasn't on a team that went on a really long run outside of maybe Montreal in 2014, which again was one of the reasons why I thought maybe Montreal should have held on to him. But a good career. Uh, he also won silver at the 2016 World Cup with Team Europe. So being Austrian, there aren't enough Austrian hockey players to put together a Team Austria. But yeah, I mean, he was part of Team Europe. Played well enough. He also has this oddity when it comes to a record. Four consecutive natural hat tricks, which tied an NHL record. He also had a natural hat trick, which was four goals. So and he might have had a couple of those, actually. But... Um, natural hat trick, of course, is where you score the three goals in a row. Uh, your regular hat trick, you might have had the first goal for your team, the second, and then the eighth goal, whatever. But he had four consecutive natural hat tricks. He was a good goal scorer, solid all around player, not spectacular, not Hall of Fame level. But if you're an Austrian, definitely a hero. Um, I don't even have to look it up. He would have to be the highest scoring Austrian born player, right? But yeah, there you go. Thomas Vanek, Austrian hero, pretty good goal scorer career video done. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.